Coming up, we hear from local lawmakers and those who could potentially be affected by higher contribution costs if a pension deal isn't reached soon. The governor of Oregon sends the state police after lawmakers who left the state before a vote on a bill. We will tell you why. And West Virginia's Senate president and governor react to a recently passed House of Delegates bill on education. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 634 on this Friday, June the 21st. I'm Will Puckin. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, for while many of you, you might be able to enjoy a little bit of your weekend. Brandon and I will be joining you tomorrow and Sunday mm -hmm. and Monday and Tuesday <laughs> and Wednesday, Thursday. No, no, no. Listen, you're going to get so tired of us after a while, <laughs> yeah. it's going to get ridiculous. Much like this rain, yes. but <laughs> unlike but for us, you get a break from the rain mm -hmm. today. Exactly, and we're going to take a look at uh, what's going on this morning across the region. We start with McKee on the camera network. Not too bad overnight. Last few hours on the time loop. It's been a pretty quiet night for them. Had a little bit of rain over in the parts of the Big Sandy, but it's gone now. Just a few clouds left behind. Some visibility issues, so be careful out there this morning. Thanks to some fog. We're looking at temperatures in the 50s and 60s. The 50s where the clouds are already gone. The 60s where the clouds still are this morning. Across the state, we're seeing temperatures in the 50s and 60s, so not a bad start of the morning. Appcast today will start off in the 60s, head into the 70s and the low 80s this afternoon under mostly sunny skies. The rest of the forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, in less than two weeks, nine days to be exact, more than 100 state funded agencies are at risk of surging pension costs. Right now, pension contributions from quasi governmental agencies such as health departments, domestic violence shelters and regional universities sit at just less than 50%. If no new bill is passed by July 1st, they will have to contribute more than 80%, which could bring layoffs and other cuts. WIMT's Justin Case met with local lawmakers to learn what they are doing to prevent difficult times for our valuable resources. A special session has not yet been called, but once it is, it would likely come after the July 1st deadline. Fixing this thing after the crisis has happened, if we miss this deadline and it does cause people to lose their job, it's kind of like putting your seatbelt on after the crash. Representative Angie Hatton says lower estimates on interest earned from pension funds is leading to higher contribution rates. Because that, that rate got artificially lowered, it caused the contribution rates for these quasi-governmental agencies to raise to the point that they can't stay in business. They, I mean, 83.4% of their payroll they're paying into retirement, they can't do it. Senator Brandon Smith says he feels optimistic a deal will get done based on the conversations he's having with the community and other lawmakers. That's the first time in my tenure that we've had this kind of interest and commitment to having the problem solved. The previous pension bill, which would have delayed the rising pension costs for one year, ended up being vetoed by Governor Bevin. I think these pensions get spent locally and that paying air um, retired people what we promised them does nothing but strengthen communities. Once the deadline passes, state-funded agencies such as mental health programs and child abuse centers would likely have to lay employees off. I'd rather have it the special session sooner than later so that we could not have to go through the exercise of seeing people literally worried to death or lose their job or seeing cuts made that didn't have to be made. The Courier Journal reports Bevan administration officials believe they have enough votes to pass a bill. Now, neither Smith nor Hatton say they have seen a new version of the bill. Senator Smith says he feels confident a retroactive fix for affected agencies would be in place. On a related note, quasi-governmental employees caught in the crosshairs are preparing for the worst. Over the last six years in McGoffin County, they have seen their employee numbers drop from 19 to 10, with two more retiring in the next year. While the July 1st deadline will not cripple them, Director Pete Shepard says it is still a blow. Well, we're going to have to cut services. Uh, most of the money I saved was cutting money that I take from our local taxing dollars and put into programs such as uh, cervical cancer uh, screenings, breast cancer screenings, things of that nature. We've had to just eliminate those. Governor Bevin is adamant he will not call a special session if he does not have the votes in hand needed to pass a bill. Now, President Trump welcomed Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to the White House on Thursday.
The two leaders made a push for the new trade deal to replace NAFTA. The U.S.-Mexico-Canada Trade Agreement, or USMCA, was signed by leaders of all three countries last year. But the U.S. and Canada still have not ratified it. The deal includes new provisions for labor as well as intellectual property and digital trade. It also increased access to Canadian markets for U.S. dairy farmers. We've worked hard to great, build a, a great trade deal that's good for Canadian workers, good for American workers, good for uh, Mexican uh, workers as well. Now Mexico became the first nation to ratify the agreement on Wednesday. President Trump and Prime Minister Trudeau also talked basketball during the visit. President Trump said he will consider inviting the Toronto Raptors to the White House to celebrate their NBA championship win last week. Meanwhile, former Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Gina McCarthy reacted to the recent decision to roll back power plant regulations. McCarthy, who served in the role under President Obama, criticized the move as being detrimental to future generations. This, this last rule that they put out yesterday was absolutely uh, an anathema to the mission of that agency. It was ignorant to science and it rejected real science action. Uh, and it, it really is going to leave us all vulnerable to more pollution, all potentially unhealthier and, and more unsafe. To Oregon now, where Republican lawmakers have left the state in order to stall the vote on a climate bill. The state Senate cannot vote on the bill unless enough senators are present to establish a quorum. The missing lawmakers oppose the climate measure and would presumably lose. So they block proceedings by not showing up Thursday. Unfortunately, Senate Republicans failed to show up and failed to do their jobs. We have a bunch of young people here. Uh, taking time out of their busy schedules uh, to tackle global climate change. Future generations will judge us not on the fact of global climate change, but what we've done to tackle it. And literally, these young people's futures and their children's futures hang in the balance. Governor Kate Brown gave state police the go-ahead to find the missing senators and bring them back to the Capitol. Now, that may sound drastic, but the Senate president said Oregon's Constitution provides for it. The wife of one of the lawmakers said all of the absent senators were at an undisclosed location in Idaho. Well, just one day after the West Virginia House of Delegates passed their version of the education omnibus bill, the state Senate president says he is ready to take it back to his chamber without amendments. Mitch Carmichael and Governor Jim Justice both say they are pleased with the bill. Justice says Wednesday night in a tweet that the legislation is, quote, a major step toward building new opportunities for our children. Carmichael wants the Senate to reconvene next week. Well, let's switch gears now. It was a big night in Brooklyn as the 73rd NBA draft took place last night at the Barclays Center. A few former Kentucky Wildcats crossed the stage into the big leagues. Let's turn it over to our sports director, Marcus Browning, who has more in our big blue coverage. P.J. Washington was the first Wildcat taken off the board for the 2019 NBA draft. Washington joins fellow Wildcats Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, and Malik Monk down in Charlotte. P.J. says returning to Kentucky was a wide decision, saying he doesn't think that he would have been a first-round draft pick had he left Lexington after his freshman season. Just one pick later, the Miami Heat selected the bucket, Tyler Hero, with the 13th overall pick. Hero was just the second pick that the Heat have made since choosing Josh Richardson 40th overall in 2015. The Heat didn't have any picks in 2016. They chose former Wildcat Bam Adebayo with the 14th overall pick in 2017 and didn't make any selections last year. PJ and Tyler make the third Wildcat duo to go back to back in UK history. The third Wildcat taken last night was Keldon Johnson with Keldon going 29th overall to the Spurs, a little bit farther down than some expected, but nonetheless, Keldon is a first round draft pick, giving John Calperi 29 first round selections since taking over as head coach for the Wildcats. Keldon is the first Wildcat to ever be selected by the Spurs. And before those guys were selected, Duke Zion Williamson was chosen as the top pick, as expected, for the 2019 NBA Draft, followed by Murray State's John Morant at number two. Duke's R.J. Barrett went number three. DeAndre Hunter went four to the Hawks. Darius Garland fifth to the Cavaliers. Jarrett Culver sixth to Minnesota. Kobe White seventh to the Bulls. Jackson Hayes eighth to the Pelicans. Rory Hashimura ninth to the Wizards. And then the third Duke player to go in the top ten, Cam Reddish, 
to the Atlanta Hawks. You can find more from the NBA drafts over on WIMT.com. <sighs> Must be nice to come out of college under 21, go and make <laughs> millions of dollars. Preach. Make, make us proud, guys. Make <laughs> us proud. <laughs> it's 6.43 in the morning. Let's send it on over to Brandon for a breakdown of what to expect on this Friday. Brandon. I was the water boy for a basketball team when I was in middle school. Does that count as, as something? Nah, probably not. That's right. Let's take a look at satellite radar. Not too much going on this morning. A few clouds still hanging out. Line pinpoint Doppler radar, though. Nice and quiet. Temperatures in the 60s. 50s, some down toward the south there. Your out-the-door forecast is going to feature some nice conditions for the first day of summer, which happens later this afternoon. 81 is our forecast time. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, don't go anywhere. We will have stories that are trending on WYMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning.